Ben, this is Matt Tyler, and we designed adjustable traction bars for our motorcycle. So first, a brief outline of what we're going to talk about today, uh, high performance applications and problems in high performance vehicles. Uh, the objective of this project, our vehicle interfaces that we will be connecting to, and the design and build of our project. So the high performance applications for this project are mainly drag racing, which is where a vehicle accelerates at a maximum rate to finish in the fastest time possible. So we wanted to maximize this performance. South Bend Clutch, which is a high performance clutch manufacturer, recommends a three-step build process. Steps one and two have already been completed on this trip. Step one is upgrade the motor for higher power output. Step two is to upgrade the transmission to hold this power. And step three is to upgrade the suspension with the traction bars to not use this extra power. Without step three, you have a performance problem known as axle wrap or power hop, wheel hop, or axle windup. Axle wrap is when the motor's torque overcomes rear suspension's ability to keep the axle at its normal condition, shown here on the left. The axle housing will try to rotate in the opposite direction that the wheels are turning or up into the vehicle and the axle will move toward the front of the vehicle. The leaf springs, which support the rear suspension of the truck, will twist into an S shape shown here on the right. So now a little definition of a few terms I've been talking about. Shown here on the left is a typical powertrain of a pickup truck. The drive shaft is shown there, the U-joints, and the axle and differential housing. Shown here on the left, on the right, is a broken drive shaft, which is the result of axle wrap. So the solution for this problem is traction bars. Traction bars prevent the axle movement longitudinally or along the length of the truck as the axle tries to rotate. So why traction bars? Well, it's a well-known trick of the trade in the high-performance vehicle industry. It's required to transmit the power to the ground effectively, and it will limit the damage to the powertrain. However, there are a few issues with the standard available traction bars on the market today. A safety concern is that traction bars will add rigidity to the frame. This changes the crumple zones of the frame in the event of a crash. The interface concern is that traction bars now are designed to fit only one specific make and make model of vehicle. So a quick definition of the crumple zone is a structural feature that diverts energy away from the passengers into a safe area in the case of a crash. It's achieved by the controlled weakening of the frame in specifically engineered locations. However, the amount of deformation depends on the speed of the impact. A low speed impact will create little to no deformation of the frame, whereas a high speed impact could create catastrophic deformation of the frame. So in this picture, we're looking from the bed of the truck down into the frame of the vehicle. As you can see here, we have the leaf springs that Ben was talking about that can pour into an S shape. And here we have the tire location in the rear section of the vehicle. In the top portion of the picture, you see the natural crumple zone of the vehicle. It's located safely behind the rear tire. And on the bottom half of the picture, you can see the new crumple zone area after traction bars are added. As you can see, it is shifted forward under the cab of the truck, which would endanger the passengers inside. So the objective of our project is to design, analyze, and produce a set of generic, adjustable, and cost-effective traction bars for a Hotchkiss-style suspension truck to reduce the efforts of axle wrap and improve the performance during drag racing. As shown here in this picture, you can see the truck that we will actually be modifying for this project. It is a 2001 Dodge Ram 2500 with a diesel engine and six-speed manual transmission. So what we have here is the vehicle integration map, which takes everything from the truck all the way down to the individual components that will be considered for this design project. And for traction bars, the components are the U-bolts, the bars themselves, the bearings, and the mounting brackets. But in order to talk about our traction bars, we first need to talk a little bit about the suspension of the vehicle. 
So what we have here is a Hotchkiss suspension, which is typical for most modern trucks today. It's typified by the U-bolts shown here in green, the differential or axle housing shown in purple, the shock absorbers shown in yellow, the leaf springs shown in red, and the wheel hubs shown here in white. So you may be asking, well, what is a traction bar? The traction bar is an aftermarket purchase that will connect the axle to the frame of the vehicle to add rigidity to the frame. It has the bearings shown up here in the top, the main straight or bent shaft, and the frame mounting brackets that you can see in the bottom portion of the picture. And for the mounting purposes, we will mount the front of our traction bars under, directly under the cap of the vehicle, and the rear portion will be mounted directly under the rear axle of the vehicle. Some of the interfaces that we needed to consider during our design were up here in the top left corner, you see the leaf springs, which has been contorted to an S shape under axle wrap. On the top right, we have the U-bolts over here, which are what we connect our rear mounting brackets to. On the bottom left, we have the axle, which is what rotates up into the bed of the frame, which creates that axle wrap. And on the bottom right, we have the frame mounting area, which is where we will be connecting our front mounting bracket. So for our project, we designed and analyzed our designs in SOLIDWORKS and used finite element analysis. The adjustability was a key design component because this eliminates the cripple zone safety concerns that we have. And the deflection, safety, and cost were the three main factors in our project. And it was also assumed that the traction bars would take all the loading due to the added torque of the truck because the bars are far more rigid than any other component in the suspension. So Matt already talked about the interfaces, so these are the two main ones we're concerned with. We got the front mounting bracket, where the, uh, the front part of the frame where the front mounting bracket will attach, and the rear axle where the U-bolts are already located that we will be attaching our rear bracket to. A few key specs for this project was that we wanted to prevent the axle rotation, which will improve the vehicle acceleration without damaging the powertrain. We wanted to allow the crumple zones to be unaffected during the normal driving condition. Uh, the main part was to be adjustable to allow a universal fitment to any truck and everyday safe driving by the removable pin. So here's a SOLIDWORKS model of our adjustable bar design. In the front, you've got the front frame mounting bracket that will be held on by two bolts that will be torqued down. You've got the rear axle bracket that attaches to the existing U-bolts. Then you have the adjustable pin, which is the main feature this far. We also added threads at each side that are reversed, so you can fine tune the length if needed. To start the project out, we had to test the truck to get power and torque rating. And we did this on a dynamometer, which is a machine that you lock your truck into and it has rollers with resistance to them that simulate the road conditions. And from that, it sends it to a computer that calculates the torque and horsepower. And then we took the torque and converted it into a linear force, which is found to be 1,620 pounds. <coughs> so here back to the SOLIDWORKS model, we had to run a FDA simulation on it. We fixed the front and the rear brackets as they would be on the truck. And then we applied the linear load to the rear end of it. You can see that our maximum deflection comes from the smaller bar, and but it only deflects at 7 thousandths of an inch. And for our shear, our, our pin shear, the value was 2,000 psi, which that yields a factor of 60, safety factor of 63, which is well above what we needed. So for further hand analysis, we had to test the shear in the bolts in the pin in the system. We had to calculate the torque required to hold the bolts, hold the brackets to the frame to make a solid connection. We had to check the column buckling to make sure that the bars will not bend under the desired load. We had to check the bearing stress in the bolt holes and the pin holes in the bar itself. And after all these limitations, we found that our chosen material will far exceed these. And also we tested our workmanship of our welding but on a pencil tester to make sure that it will not fail. So that will be our limiting factor. All right, so here's a brief description of the build process. We had to start with the thread collar, which was a solid round stock. 
and we had to turn it down all the way in the AC with Justin's help. And then we had to insert that into our main tube. That way it'll allow us to have uh, materials that the thread is going to be. So we moved on to the axle mounting bracket, which is a quarter inch plate that is cut on the water jet of also the AEC. And those are the welds that we had to make sure and test that they were going to withstand the force. So then that, we had to install the bearings into the bracket. And then on the bottom left, you can see the fully assembled bar on the ground. And then here on the right, it, with you looking at the front mounting bracket, you're looking back into the axle, and that's the actual bar on the truck. So shown here is the final product of the bars on the truck. We conducted some post-installation testing and found that the shifts were smoother at peak torque loads. There was no rear axle hopping, which is caused by the axle wrap. And the adjustability pin can be removed in under two minutes for safe driving conditions. So a few lessons that we learned during our installation process. Uh, we had some frame complications that forced the bar to be shorter than we initially anticipated. We had to change where we were going to mount the front bracket. The driver's side front mounting bracket had to be modified because the emergency brake cable was in the way, so we had to cut a notch out of the mounting bracket. The fuel tank on the driver's side caused mounting complications because it was butted against inside of the frame, so very difficult to bolt the front mounting bracket to the frame. And the pre-drilled adjustment points had to be modified, but that was, this was because we used a shorter bar length. So to conclude our project, we found that traction bars are a very essential part of the vehicle's performance abilities. Without the bars, the vehicle could and most likely would require significant and quite costly repairs to the powertrain. And the traction bars that we designed for this project were analyzed for the deflection and ease of installation while maintaining vehicle safety features and staying within our personal budget. As an example, one of our potential competitors' traction bar sets would cost around $700, whereas our bars cost $390. We'd like to give a special thanks to Dr. Natasha Smith, our advisor, for helping us this semester, Donna Moore for helping us graduate, the engineering faculty, and our friends and family. Does anyone have any questions? Not sure if I quite understand how you're uh, maintaining the designed crumple zones. It sounded like you said you're going to remove the pin when you're done racing, but then didn't you also say that that was a threaded uh, connection? The threaded connection is actually on the two ends of the bar. The pin is located directly in the middle, so the if you pull that pin, the solid bar inside will be allowed to move freely inside the outer bar. Great, thank you. Thanks, gentlemen. Uh, it's good to hear, hear you talk about this project. I know you were excited about it in the, in the spring. So I have a couple questions here. Did you measure your acceleration performance before and after installation of this product? No, we did not because we were, we were concerned about the safety of testing that with university policies. We were worried that they could be liable if something would happen to us while we were testing that, so we did not test the acceleration before and after. So we're I guess in January you could. Ben, <laughs> you're saying something? We just removed that from the scope of our project. Okay. Uh, the second is, uh, what did you learn about uh, traction bars and axle hop uh, over these past few months that you had not known uh, before? It was actually kind of an eye-opener after we put the bars on because I didn't realize how much axle wrap was actually happening on my truck. Uh, I didn't realize it would affect the shifts 
and how rigid they actually made it. Everything feels a lot smoother and tighter when they're just driving the trim. Well, first of all, congratulations for the completion of your program. Uh, congratulations for the great presentation. And second, uh, the question is, uh, how difficult would be to use that design for other trucks, you know, like Chevy, you know, Ford, etc. Well, it would be very easy. Uh, that's why we designed it to be a, a universal. The inner bar is about two foot long, and we can uh, drill the select selection holes wherever we would like, and then fine tuning. Uh, there are approximately two to four inches of threads on either end. Thank you. All right, other questions? Does the angle that they run at, does that have any effect? Or did you just simply try to place with some existing holes to run to? Uh, just from the past research, we found that they suggest running the bar at the same angle of the drive shaft just so it allows it to get the full motion of suspension. But, uh, that's, so that's pretty much what we do. Yeah. Anything else? Oh, all right, let's give my hand.